Oh, and there we are on YouTube. Huh. Uh, if anyone has their microphone on, how is everyone doing? Great. <laughs> Still loving that background, Sally, of your. Um... Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, the, the reason why I stopped doing backgrounds is because, uh, like, it was making me look like weird figures coming out of me. Um, oh, yeah, I look a little strange. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a green screen. I think if you use a green screen, it's supposed to look better. I, I really wanted Pee Wee Herman's uh, Playhouse. <laughs> I have, if you know uh, what that looks like, it's pretty funny, but. Oh yeah, I yeah. So I shut mine down. I have I have a beautiful one of the town of Clinton from the bluff. Oh, I actually can't see you. Like, am I supposed to be able to see anything? Because I just see uh, Nora. Um, uh, but I don't see anything else. You don't see me. I don't see you. D Nora, can you see him? No. Oh, you can't see him either. Okay. Oh, are, are you Michael? Yeah, I just, my picture popped up just for a second. I'm trying to oh, okay. get me to see, because that would be a little weird. Um, I wonder why it's not. Oh, I know why. I have one of those uh, little um, video guards. Oh, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> well, it's just a, it's a little thing you have on your computer, and you could shut it, and then it, the camera, even if the camera's on, you can't see anything. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. See, like I started like disappearing. <laughs> I need, I need, definitely need the green screen. <laughs> Parts of me are missing. Oh, we got somebody else. Hello, everyone. We will be starting in about five minutes or so. I'm sure a few people will be a little late. And I, I know I'm going to be getting a little thirsty, so please. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, maybe I should have like some music <laughs> playing or something. Hello, Mayor. Hello, Mayor. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Hmm. It's good. We've got 12 people so far. Oh, cool. 
and uh, Mr. Traphagen is joining us now. What was that? That was fun. We'll get started in a couple minutes. In the meantime, Ross will sing us a song. <laughs> you wish. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm not horrific, but I'm not that good. <laughs> I have a piano and a harp if you want. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're really amping things up. <laughs> uh, well, I play mean air guitar. Does that help? <laughs> you want to come over here? Somebody wants to get in. Oh, give me a second. Somebody wants to get into Zoom from YouTube. So let me give them the, uh, the link. Well, hello, everyone. Um, if, uh, you don't know me. My name is Mike Humphrey. I'm councilman here in town. And um, uh, myself and, and Councilman Ross Tripagan um, thought that uh, since we can't really meet uh, for the elders committee, one of the things you might do is just have more of a social activity, but one that can um, maybe help us build a little bit more of, of the history of our town over the last, you know, 40, 50 years or longer, uh, people telling their own personal stories, things that they remember or things of, uh, you know, of relatives or other people they knew, just, you know, to, to kind of fill in the blanks. Um, so um, uh, Councilman Traphagen is part of the Historic Commission and uh, let him talk a little bit about that. Definitely, uh, thank you. Uh, we have one of the things that, and I know uh, Mike, uh, you've said as well is that, you know, we have incredible history when it comes to from the 17th to the 1800s to the early 1900s, but then it kind of stops in terms of the actual records that we really have. Um, and we, we don't have kind of that last 50 to 100 years. Um, we don't have that, we're, that time period where town developed and things changed and so forth. Um, so we kind of saw this as a great opportunity to merge these uh, two committees together um, and to be able to have a dialogue with, with folks who have some memories or maybe even some old photos as well that we can you know, discuss here together as a group and then also compile it together as kind of a, a living history um, that we can have for the public to be able to, to watch down the road and be able to learn from each and every one of you. Yeah, great, so thank you. Um, so just some basic rules. Uh, try to stay muted unless you're talking or asking a question. There's a chat function at the bottom of your screen. So if you do want to tell a story, um, use that. Just ch ch uh, just you know, type in your name, and I'll call on you after you know in 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 the order that it's it's uh, showing. Uh, for those people who might be calling in, uh, we'll wait for you to tell your stories until after uh, after we've gone with everyone who um, who's uh, is on via video. Um, Tr try to keep your stories to three or four minutes if you can. 
Uh, if it goes on too long, you might hear me interrupt you, uh, you know, to, to very kindly ask if we can wrap it up so we can allow for more people to talk. Um, and, uh, you know, at, at any time after somebody's story, if you have a question or two, ask it. Um, you know, this is meant to, get, you know, just paint a picture of, of what Clinton has been over the last uh, half decade or so. So anyway, so I'm, I'm nominated our, our wonderful mayor um, to give us, uh, you know, one of her stories. Sure. So, hey, everyone, it's nice to see you all, even if it is virtually for now. I just wanted to share. So I grew up, for those of you who don't know, I grew up in Clinton. I went to Clinton Public, graduated in North Hunterdon. Allie McGarren was my eighth grade social studies and homeroom teacher. And she was really the one that um, got me interested in history and especially the history of the town of Clinton. So one of the things that she always wanted to do was to, to record and capture everyone's stories. You know, when we'd sit down and have coffee, um, one of the things that she always reminded me of, and I conveniently forgot that we ever did this, but as kids, we used to walk across the falls. Now, any, anyone today, if, if we caught anyone walking across the falls, we'd probably all lose our minds. But as kids, we used to walk back and forth between the art museum and the Red Mill all summer long. It was just one of those things that we always did. And she used to remind us how if she caught us, we all wound up in trouble when uh, she saw us back in school. But, you know, for me, Clinton is, it's a community. And that's the one thing that Allie always wanted it to always stay. And we started this project um, kind of a little differently before we were all quarantined. Back the end of last year, we were trying to do some recording of people's stories. And it's so important when we lost Allie and Pat, and then we lost Jean, we lost, you know, three people who probably cover a lot of those years that that you're looking for, Ross, right? So, you know, we tried to catch some of that with Allie, but not enough of it. But then when you really kind of look around, there's still a lot of residents, um, maybe not in town, but locally, and even across the country that are willing to share their stories and, and talk about what they remember growing up. And, um, you know, I'm excited to be able to, to see this and, and maybe create something that our kids and grandkids and great grandkids get to, to hear about, um, you know, a town that we all love so much. So with that, I'll turn it back over. Yeah, so um, does anyone want to step up and tell one of their stories? Anyone? Yeah, Kathy, here, uh, you have to unmute. Hi, I'm Kathy Katamatori, and I have lived in the area on and off since 1969. Um, we bought our first house many, many years ago in Clinton when they were building Clinton Knowles, the section on Hillside Drive, Messing, that area. And uh, we lived there for eight years and then were transferred around the country for 11 years. Came back in 88 and I've lived in Clinton Township for most of that time now in Lebanon Borough. But I work in Clinton. I work at Berkshire Hathaway now in Clinton, worked at Weikert for many years. So I basically raised my children with babies here. I basically started raising my children in Clinton. And my son who lives in Texas, whenever he tells anyone his story, he says he grew up in Mayberry because it was very much like Mayberry back then in the day. Um, my kids also, they walked across the falls. They walked down the hill uh, to go to school. You know, they came down behind the mill and, and uh, all of that behind the Clinton house. Um, they waded in Spruce Run Reservoir. We ice skated on the South Branch of the Raritan behind the Methodist Church. So I remember all those things. And I remember the bridge was two ways back in the day. 
So, um, you know, every once in a while, when I first came back to Clinton in 88, um, to the Clinton area, for a long time there, I would come down Lower Center Street and have to stop myself because I almost made a right turn to go over the bridge towards the Clinton house. So um, my children also went to Clinton Public and uh, walked to school, of course. We only, we only did carpool in those days when it was raining. Um, so, you know, I just, uh, Clinton is where my heart is. I grew up in Hoboken, but when I got married, we came out here and, and you know, Clinton is, uh, Clinton is where my heart is. My kids are all gone, no family here, just work here. I mean, I have two children and their families in Hoboken, interestingly enough, and two fam two kids and their families in Texas. So how, but we, how did how did they manage the traffic on the bridge? There wasn't much traffic, Michael. <laughs> there wasn't no really. I mean, it was just, you know, it was just you, you know, you came up to the bridge. If you saw somebody coming, you waited. It was just like you took turns. It was still one lane. You just got to go both ways. Yeah, it was still one lane, but obviously it wasn't any bigger than it is now. It was the same bridge, but it was two ways. So um, I'm trying to think. The, the music hall. I remember when the music hall was a music hall. Um, I belonged to the junior women's club as a young mom. And um, in the summers, they had um, summer stock theater at the music hall. And there was a, a theater group that came down every summer from Ithaca College in New York. And they put on, I think it was like five productions over the summer. Two weekends, they did one show. And then the third and fourth weekend, it would be another show all summer long. And we used to go down there and it was, it was like you were going to Broadway. We got all dressed up and they had intermission. We came outside with our little glass of champagne for intermission. It was wonderful. And uh, the Junior Women's Club also put on each uh, summer a production for the children. Like I remember the last one I think we did was Where the Wild Things Are, a lot, you know, a live production. So it was, you know, it um, it was sad to see that there was no music hall when I came back to Clinton other than, you know, it was turned into um, offices and things. And then of course, when it burned down, it was, it made me very sad because it was wonderful. It was wonderful back in the day. So trying to think what else. Clinton House Restaurant was always the Clinton House restaurant. Never, never changed, always the same. Um, up where, um, what is it? Um, I guess it's now the bank by the Dunkin' Donuts. That was a great restaurant, Vittorio's. It was a Clinton restaurant years ago, uh, Italian restaurant years ago. Um, and of course the Dazzadel, the Dazzadel was where McDonald's is. That was a, um, I considered it primarily an ice, a place you went for ice cream, but you could go inside and you could get burgers and whatever. And the Dazadel was wonderful. They had the that best. Was, that, was next to, that was next door to a movie theater, right? Right, where Pete Pat Gladstone Bank was. I was going to get theater. to the movie theater. So the movie theater back in the day was very unClinton like. The movie theater had. X-rated oh. movies. I mean, they had porn, they had pornography, which probably today is what we watch on TV. You know, I mean it, but yeah, and and you would you would you know see the the marquee on the theater. It had three big X's on it. You know, so it was very. Of course, it wasn't the town. It, it was Clinton Township, but still. Well, that explains everything. <laughs> but yet it was a Clinton resident that owned it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there are some old pictures of the uh, of the movie theater. Uh, there was a time when they showed, you know, regular movies. Oh, 
yeah. Oh no, there was. It's. It wasn't just that, but they did. You know, maybe once a month on a weekend, they they had the X-rated movies. They did show regular movies as well, but so. <laughs> to think what else uh so dr. Just... dr pierce dr pierce was our family doctor who i love dearly who just passed away what three or four years ago i guess and uh he was right on center street he went to his office with the kids the office visit was five dollars and uh, he had my children loved him because he had such a great bedside manner and he had all these um murals of Disney characters all over the exam walls. He wasn't a pediatrician, he was a general practitioner, but he really, the kids loved him, so. No, it, was, okay. uh, the, it was the mid seventies that the fire department moved to what was a grocery store, oh. I take it? Yes, it was an Acme. That was an Acme on that corner where the fire department is now. Um, and the rescue squad was where the, was next to the post office on East Main. I'm trying to think. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was an acme where the fire department is now. And the fire department was a little bit further, I guess where like PNC Bank is, you know, it was down a little further uh, before it moved to where Acme is, Acme was. Um, what was that side of town like, that east side of town? It seems that, you know, there are a lot of newer buildings now with the office buildings, the, um, the um, Mavis Tire, um, all of that stuff. Um, was, That's was that boy was there to, there to get gas yeah i i don't even yeah like my office is down there my office is in the unity concourse building i don't even I, to tell you the truth janice you probably remember i don't even remember what was what used to be there i mean you didn't there was never much over there you know no there wasn't i mean there was the agway um on that property where the the two buildings are and they used to go, that's because they had the cheapest gas in town. And as right. a new driver, that was where I could afford to put gas in the car. Um, does, do you remember the old um, swimming hole? Over by, uh, it's behind what Gebhardt Field is now. I just found oh. because, um, yeah, uh, Venata, Mr. Venata showed me where the steps are. They're behind the, the fence right now. You can't actually get to them, but the, the steps are still there down to the old swimming hole. Really? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I, I do vaguely remember that, um, yeah. And the fireworks over in the field, because the um, Rachel Court wasn't there, so the fireworks right. used to be there and we July. Were, we were there um, for the, um, uh, what was it, the, um, Bicentennial yep. in 76. It was really a big fireworks show. Yes. And you know, we used to have the parades down Halstead Street for like Memorial Day. Right. Fourth of July. My kids were in brownies and Cub Scouts and stuff. And they were all excited because they got to march in these parades. Right. Nothing, nothing better than those days. No, it was um when you look back and you know hearing the stories it reminds you of everything yeah that you had you know growing up it was so much simpler it was, at simpl that point it in time. was simpler i and remember the dugouts when the the dugouts used to be at gebhardt field before they turned it into the bleachers yes yeah that was a and place where teenagers hung out i didn't hang out there though yeah sure and uh like as far as the stores on main street i mean um the sub base yep. was there the, we were just talking today on Facebook about the Ben Franklin five and 10. Yes. And um, Charlie's Bootery, of course. Yep. Where I got my saddle shoes for cheerleading. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
and the Arlene's hairdresser, which is now yeah. a hair place. Um, added touches by Mary. Added touches. That's right. Added touches. Yeah. Yeah. Those are some of the original ones that I remember. Um, yeah. And of course, you know, what Clinton Pharmacy that used to be Yeskies. Yes. That was the, and the bakery on Halstead. The bakery. Yeah. Yeah. What was her name? Oh, German lady. Yep. Oh, I used to I remember going down there for donuts. They had the best donuts. Yeah. That yeah. was when you got real donuts with custard filling and jelly yeah. filling. Yeah. I can't remember her name now. I can't remember her name either. But um and where Christie's is, that was a um women's dress shop for many years. Yep. I don't remember what the name of that was either, but well, Pauline, Pauline. The Democrat was over by where that little uh, bodega is. Yes. And on yes. the other side of that, my um, mom's cousin used to own Petidor Pet Shop. Oh. So before we even moved into town, when they had the pet store there, I used to come and stay with them and work at the pet store. Interesting. Yeah. Yep. This, uh, does anyone else? want to pipe in share even just their experience of moving into Clinton or? when I moved into Clinton we bought the chandelier behind me from the ladies dress store that's now the Regal Bridge Credit Union this this was in the really? main lobby yeah wow I remember that and downstairs we have a stained glass lamp from the men's clothing store downtown. And it was an arrow shirt, uh, fake uh, stained glass, but uh, in a Tiffany style. Who owned the men's store? Do you remember? Oh, I'm, yeah, that's what I'm trying to, th I can picture him, the tall, thin guy yeah. with dark hair. Um, Matthews. Yes. Matthews, yeah. He was there forever. He was yeah. there for a long time. He really was. I want to throw in some peg leg stories. Oh, I want to hear peg leg stories. So this is all from Allie. Um, but the peg leg cabin at the Red Mill was never there. And what is there is representative of how peg leg lived but I'm not aware that anything in there is original peg leg. And Allie used to say that you could tell a peg leg grave by if it's sunk, if um, it wasn't flat with the other graves because he never dug it the required depth. But the, the last peg leg story um, was a shock and a surprise to Allie uh, when her sister died and they went to open the grave at Allerton Methodist Church, Allerton and 31, she found out that her grandfather had buried peg leg there. And there was a little slab of cement that it looked like his name had been cut in, in, um, you know, just with a twig, putting his name. But it what, must know that one. It must have been one of the last burials that her grandfather, as superintendent of that cemetery, handled because then she took it over. But she, there was no record of it until they opened the grave. That's the best peg leg story yet. I have a question. Um, in the '90s, there seemed to be a lot of a lot of houses, but a lot of little developments, like the one I live in on Fieldstone and, and Hunts Mill, and so on. What was there before these uh, these developments were built? So where I am was an old farm. That as kids, it was always wet. So in the winter time, we could ice skate in the fields, and in the summertime, they used to ride dirt bikes through the mud. 
And under today's conditions, these homes would never be built because of the floodplain that we're in right now. Yours, I don't remember what was over, uh, probably a farm because I think part of Beaverbrook was a farm, wasn't it, Kathy? Yeah. Clinton Knowles was the farm of Mary and Rudy Wishy, which is the origin of the name Marudi. Oh, really? And there's a scene, I think it's in the closed TD Bank, um, of you see a fence at the top of the cliff, which was the edge of their farm, which had cows. And um, that wow. picture came from Allie's collection of what they put there. Wow. 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 We should have a, a picture party one day because we've got a ton of photos at the municipal building that to go through and help have a, you know, people help organize those that remember different things and you know mm -hmm. what it might be. It would be yeah. great to be able to catalog and label them too, definitely. Yeah. The collection, we could, you could take them, it doesn't necessarily have to be the original photos as well, but you know, whether it be copying them or so something and put right. them together in a nice big collage as well, or even even if we can form some sort of timeline too, would be nice. Beth had started, her son was doing a, um, and Mike, I think you worked on this too. Uh, John had done a couple of pictures where he was scanning them in, and then Mike, you were working on something, doing a, a before and after, right? Yeah, I, I'm just doing it um, per newsletter, um, you know, just to add spice. So one of the shocking ones I, I had no idea about was that the Halstead Street Bridge used to be, you know, used to be a truss bridge and it was one lane mm -hmm. right next to where um, where Vicki Healy um, a realtor is. There used to be another building mm -hmm. uh, next to it, which would now uh, encompass the northbound lane on Lee Street going into Halstead. Right. And, and there so was also an incident with that bridge. Didn't it fall in the river or something? Something yeah, happened. There are photos um, of a truck that, because that was the problem with this bridge, especially when it got cold, and it was those are made of pure iron ore, which is brittle. Um, yeah, so they uh, the, that's why there aren't a lot of truss bridges left in the United States. Um, that the the um, iron truss bridge uh, off of Main Street is one of the last ones left in the United States. And that one had an incident. <laughs> the video of the truck the, the camper the truck pulling the camper a few weeks ago and hitting the bridge yeah thankfully the guy had a nice a lot of damage done to his camper i mean that was he was crazy yeah he I, wants to mess with our bridge i'm glad that he had some damage to deal with yeah yeah also on halstead street when we moved to clinton which was the summer of 69 for the first two months we were there, um, we're Catholic and the Immaculate Conception Church. Really close. The tiny little there. church on Halstead Street, right yeah. at the cemetery. The other cemetery. And then, when, when did it move to the uh, cow barn? In September of '69. Okay. Actually, it's a bull barn. Oh, a it, bull barn. That's right. It I never had on that one. It never had any females there. <laughs> I always call it the cow barn. <laughs> I know, we all do. Well, the funny thing is, is the first time my husband came out, um, we were going to church and he's like, this is an odd shaped building. I'm like, it's an old yeah. cow barn. That's why he's like, we're having mass in a cow barn. I'm like, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> the first and third churches of Immaculate Conception in Clinton were both barns. The very first church was a barn donated by the Mulligan family, and it is where the Mulligan plot is now. Oh. And in the um, uh, diocesan records, there's a review, I think it was Bishop Bailey, about the unpainted, ugly, unkept uh, barn. I also hear a horse stuck his head in one of the windows 
while the bishop was celebrating mass. <laughs> and then they built a new church, a little tiny, tiny church um, where um, uh, I think the Hank Snyder uh, burial site is probably near the front steps. And then um, Father Morris bought the farm in Clinton Township mm -hmm. from the cooperative. It was the first artificial insemination cooperative in the United States. <laughs> and he bought the entire property after having a contract for the property behind the um, Presbyterian Church where Jean DeClean lived, but um, her name escapes me. And Hello, I will um, be polite about it. She broke the contract, but the church owned the um, Victorian houses on either side, um, the old Yeski house and the other house, they owned those two and were planning to build the church and the school behind it. I didn't know that. Father Morris lived in, not the Yeski house, but he lived in the one on the other side. That was the rectory. Yep. And, and the they owned, they owned um, Yeski house. And that's where they used to have like, they had the rummage sale there. We had altar rosary society meetings there and different things there. So it was, yeah, it was those two those two properties, but I never knew about, um, you know, the plans to build the church back there. They also tried to obtain the property where, is it Century, the telephone company is? Yeah. Uh, Mulligan got a much higher offer from the telephone company than he got from the Catholic church. So. <laughs> well, especially if it was Father Morris that was involved. Yes. Father Morris, um, for uh, many decades, um, bought the final clothes casket, uh, said the mass, and held the burial for the paupers of all of Hunterdon County. Really? Yes. Um, unfortunately or fortunately, um, they are not are on any of the cemetery records. Um, it was kind of peg leg burials, but they're where, in the back. Where, um, which cemetery were they buried in? Um, we call it Evergreen, but it's Evergreen St. Mary's. Okay. And in the back by the shed, we believe is where the paupers are. Okay. Our own heart island here in Clinton. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm the historian at Bethlehem Presbyterian Church, and I've done quite a lot of, of um, graveyard photography and siding and creating records on find a grave um, all over the, the region. Um, mm -hmm. So I've been putting together a lot of the old family trees and linking the, the family stories, and I'll have some of the ancestors contact me every once in a while looking for information or records or, or what they can find out just because I've, I've photographed their ancestors' gravestones. So uh, it's interesting to see where they're, um, what we can find and how much are documented. What time period was he doing this in? 1969 to, um, I'll say 1990. Okay, that's too recent. I can't get those records out of the archives because I'll dig out. Part a lot of the, the problem older. is there are no pauper records. <laughs> they can't be found. They may not have ever been created. Not even death records at the state? Death records at the state, yeah. But that's about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're not public. The, the most recent records I can get is 1961, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Earlier than that, I can I can find things, but not bef not afterwards. How how come? They're pr they're citing privacy reasons, and the uh, state won't release records for um, uh, p 
people that it's like 50 years or something that they won't uh, won't release but every every couple of years they'll catch up and we'll release another year or two but i can go into the state archives and can dig out and have dug out an incredible amount of documentation on early cemetery and early burials mm -hmm. We so. found a body at Clinton Presbyterian Church when we had to dig up the water pipes and it was under the um, front left staircase. That was Whoa. where that was where Protestant paupers were put, were under the staircases. You didn't get a plot. Oh my gracious. Um, and the reason for the very beautiful wall now at Clinton Press is in the time period when we had to replace the water pipes, the bodies were moving downhill. And to keep them pushed back up, we put that very, very fancy wall to keep the bodies in. Are they well, still there or are they reburied? Um, we just pushed them back. <laughs> Uh, I believe the pauper was put back in the ground. I, I don't think there was any identification. One of the reasons there is, uh, in addition to state regs, is the tradition of putting the poor under front steps. So there's that broad space in the St. Mary's side of the cemetery, where between um, state regs and our old history, we don't know what's there. I don't know that we want to know what's there. <laughs> yeah. Probably not. So um, do we, I know at one point in time, there had been a, Ali used to do a, a night tour of the cemetery mm -hmm. at, the, at the church. Yep. Did we ever get that recorded or do we have that somewhere? Because I think that would be another awesome to, you know, to be able to do that and, uh, and have the historic commission kind of recreate that tour. I would love to find it. I haven't heard about it. Um, there's two places I check with Doug Martin. And um, it, it, it was Allie's little rubber band pack of index cards. And it, it had a top Clinton Presbyterian Cemetery and St. Mary's Cemetery. I don't know where those rubber band packs ended up. I they worked, might be. Oh. Yeah, I worked with Doug Martin a couple of years ago and was able to get, he gave me graciously, gave me access to his records for Riverside. Um, and I put all of those on Find a Grave so that they are recorded, the plot numbers are there, um, there it's available uh, and then made, correct, made corrections between who was buried in Clinton Presby Churchyard and which one was in Riverside, mm -hmm. but at least got that recorded out. I had, was originally scheduled um, to do a cemetery seminar as, as you know, Janice, um, this weekend with the Bethlehem Presbyterian Church, um, but it, we had to, to postpone it or cancel it for, for this past weekend. But um, I know we had a, a lot of interest in the history of the region um, and all of Clinton's history goes back through Bethlehem Presbyterian for the Presbyterian mm -hmm. side of it. Um, so it, it's interesting for, to track it. Yeah, for some reason, my understanding is in the 1800s and the early 1900s, it was the living went to Bethlehem Presbyterian that's where you were baptized and where you were married. But even if you were a Bethlehem Presbyterian member, your um, funeral was at Clinton Presbyterian and there were frequent entourages from the Annandale train station bringing funeral cortages down Center Street to be buried at CPC. Well, I'd heard that as Clinton grew, it was, it was the more prominent place to be buried. It, it was more mm -hmm. prestigious as Bethlehem Presby was the country church, the old country church. Mm -hmm. um, but the Clinton Presby was, was the in town, the, the uh, more prominent location. Mm -hmm. 
So Bob and I were having dinner, so that's why we were blank for a few minutes. But I collect um, Clinton postcards. I love the vintage postcards. And I've got one that I can't figure out where the spot is. So I'm going to show you and see if you guys can. Does that, does that make sense? Does anybody know where that is? It doesn't have anything on the back that identifies it. But it just says greetings from, from Clinton, New Jersey. Isn't that a wild one? Like to imagine that cows are roaming around. <laughs> I'm wondering if it, because it's on the hill, I'm wondering if it's around the Beaverville Country Club. Oh, that could be. One there. of the farms over there. Or could, it, could it be representing the Knolls? Yeah. Well, remember, oh, yeah. Clinton, Clinton, New Jersey was also, the, the township was actually here before the town was. They carved Ooh. out, they carved out Clinton, the town of Clinton out of Union, Franklin, and Clinton Township to this they, is they, there were these yeah, there were these um, um, battles that were going on regarding who owned what property um, because the, the what ended up being the town of Clinton was the, um, the, the commercial center of all three of those towns. Hmm. And this is the waterfalls, but I don't know where that is either unless it's by the red mill did there used to be a, a river running there or a fall running there that actually looks like it could be over by solitude doesn't it it does yeah yeah you think so yeah it could be miss miss mark this postcard it's yeah. um lower falls at clinton new jersey <clears throat> yeah because it kind of looks a little bit like we should probably get some of the old Solitude Village Falls pictures and, and do some comparisons and maybe even work with some of the other uh, historic commissions like in Highbridge or some of the other towns. Yeah. We also there's, have one, a there's one cool one which shows what downtown looked like. <laughs> and look how the cars are parked. Oh, that's yeah, right. When they're I wanted to ask, uh, I mean, uh, does anyone remember when there used to be diagonal parking on Main Street? I've seen pictures of it, but I've never, uh, I don't have a postcard of it. I think that ended in the 50s, if I'm not mistaken. It, the it looks, parking. Some of the pictures that I've seen, it's been parked every which way. And some of them are parallel and diagonal on the same, <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> There's so also a cool. very large um, picture catalog at the Red Mill. I don't know their system, but we might want to look at if they've created a system for Clinton, just yeah. following along. But they have a lot of the glass negatives from the prominent oh, wow. photographer cool. who was a dentist. Yeah, Allie, don't, Allie had them and donated them to the Red Mill. Yeah, I think Gus Vanetta also. Yes. Yep. Yeah, he's got a, his son has a, um, a lot of stories to share, having grown up, you know, he's in the same house, they just redid the house where he grew up. He has some pictures of the house originally. The house is in that location, because it was as far as Gus could ride on his bike from his mother's house from downtown Clinton. <laughs> and so that's what determined the plot that he bought for his bride to build their house. And he was, he used to work at the Clinton National Bank. Was it Clinton National Bank? Yeah, I think so. Before, whichever the very first one where the, um, on, uh, the on the corner there. On the corner there, yeah. And that used to have the drive through. You came, it had a yep. drive through there. And that was where I opened my very first savings account. I remember the walk up where you could do the walk up drawer. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, we're dating ourselves here. Oh. Well, how long have you been here, Janice? So we moved here in 78, but I had been coming here since probably 74 when my um, my mom's cousin owned the, the pet store in town. 
That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> so I said I, I was at Clinton Public longer than most anyone else because I graduated, my brother graduated, my sister graduated, my daughter graduated, and then both my boys graduated. So I find I graduated Clinton Public in 79. I finally left Clinton Public in 2016. <laughs> 16. And before awesome. we built the all-purpose room, yep. we used to, used to hold Clinton public graduations at Clinton Presbyterian Church. Yeah. Well, if you're, if you're interested, we have, um, uh, I could just rattle through some of these, but there are some wonderful um, photos from the, the turn of the century and all the way up to the 20s and 30s. Of Clinton. And if any of these photos bring back any, you know, stories and memories, just just let me know. I'm going to put the share screen on. None of us are old enough for that, Mike. Yeah, I, maybe. Maybe. No, I'm just talking about the, the photos themselves. Hold on. I got to get rid of these. Town Hall. Yeah, so that's uh, Lee Street Bridge. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, 43 Lee Street right there. And this is uh, the bluffs overlooking Water Street. Mm -hmm. The coach and paddock. Wow. Where was that? That's it the still great is. colonial. Oh, OK. It was the doctor's office. Yep. This is from mm -hmm. Clinton Knowles. Yep. Those are the falls. School? Yeah, I've got that postcard. The Union Hotel? Mm hmm You know, I, lo I love this, um, I love this patio that they had here. Yeah. It's a shame that's not there anymore. That would, that right now, that would, Heck, you can run one heck of a restaurant with a with a dining room there. Okay, this church. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> All the hitching posts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I, I also noticed that there are these uh, wood planks because I guess the there's the whole drainage thing along here. Mm-hmm. The falls again. So the falls been replaced, or is the, those aren't the original falls, are they? These are very horizontal. I'm sure that there's been a, a number of things that's been done to them over the years, and we just did it uh, 2012. We did the repairs to the dam and the dike, which reinforced the dam itself. Oh, I love that picture. <laughs> That's What's first like run? Solitude? Oh, Solitude. Oh, Solitude Lake. What a conjure true. I wonder what that sign is. No one's tall enough to see it. Bridge weight limit? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Uh, there's another picture of it I've seen somewhere. It, it's, it's maybe I don't think it's, it's actually serious. I think it's like a joke, and it says something about paying a fine if you do something. I forget what, <laughs> in particular, but it's a, it's like a joke about paying a fine. Well, I was just thinking that maybe it was that high because of people riding their horses over it. One year there were signs on the bridge in Down the Town about the bird feast and bring your shot goose. And that enraged Allie. <laughs> I'm sure it did. What, now, where was the old Clinton Public School? Where it is now. Know? What? It's always been where it is. This oh, burned just, down. When, when this burned down, they put the new building up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The old Iron Foundry. 
go back to that last page. Sure. The bricks. So down by the river behind our house, there is there's a, a structure down by the river that looks um, I mean it's a similar type thing, but it's there used to be something that was right on the river and it was all stone, um, but there's only a couple of walls left of it. Yeah, I've always wondered what that is. I wonder if it was just even a barn or something like that. I know, right? Barn. You've seen it too. Mm -hmm. they have, I, they I, I've used, poked around there a few times. They would not use stone for a barn. That's true. No, well, they the, would have used the it for it. Um, the foundation. Because if you look where the stone is, it kind of stops at about the point of a foundation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you've been back there. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. Um, but it was so close to the river. Like, why would you build a house that close to the river? Yeah, and the it might house. not have been close to the river at that time. Well, that's true. <laughs> so I've got a matchbooks cover, uh, matchbooks matchbook cover, that is the DeClean family at the Clinton house. Um, really? Yeah, it's really cool. Oh wow. All right, I'm coming also, to your house when this all goes back to normal. I want to see this. Yeah. <laughs> we're, having, we're having a picture pot. Yeah. I absolutely adore this because this is all woods now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's a shame because um, they have adjusted this area of the front of the building. And really? Yeah. You, you don't even know that that existed. It looks like mighty house. ugly. At least we still have the building now. Yes. Yeah, it looks very different though. Yeah. Yeah. There it is, the Halstead Bridge. Yeah. No, wait a minute. No, that's the Main Street Bridge. Sorry. There it is, Clinton National Bank. How many? How many? How many businesses have been in that building? <laughs> Actually, I think it was always a bank until um, the the company that's there, right? Wasn't right. it always a bank? Yes. And it just kept changing um, ownership because they kept merging. Mm -hmm. Which shop now, is this? Is the flower store where um, the cheese store is? Actually, I think it was always a bank until... What's the... Why do we hear the video? Yeah, what, we're hearing a replay or something. Somebody has their YouTube up. And it just kept changing. Um, oh. Do I? Oh, maybe. I, do I have YouTube up? No, I don't have YouTube up. <laughs> I wouldn't have to have YouTube up as well as this. Uh, well, I don't think it's me. Um, What's the? Why do we hear the? I know it's wild. You can yeah, <laughs> you can hear you asking why it's replay. there. Clinton High School. Oh, yeah. Clinton High School, oh, nineteen eighteen. But it look, it almost looks like a church, doesn't it? I wouldn't have to have YouTube up as well as this. Hold on a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the share for a second. I mean, I'm just gonna check and make sure it's not me. I was closing out my uh, I was closing out my YouTube. Somebody else, somebody else has theirs open. I just checked. I don't have it up. Uh, the, here's the, um, the, the, the fire. Remnants of the fire, yeah. Where are they? Right here. What, what, is that a street? I think it's Main Street. Is that Main Street or East Main Street? I don't know. Uh... Well, almost, the, almost everything burned down because um, I've got the newspaper, a copy of the newspaper from the day after the fire. So that could be Main Street. It's Main Street. Well, this, yeah, so this is, uh, this is Main Street. I, what I love about these photos on the bluff is taking a look at the, the whole background here, all the elevated areas. Almost everything burned down. 
because I've got the newspaper, a copy of the newspaper from the day after the fire. So that could be Main Street. It's Main Street. Well, this, yeah, so this is, uh, this is Main Street. I've, Clinton, the Clinton Academy, I the, Clinton the, Academy the, the high school, was that the same thing? All the elevated areas. Everything burned down. Um, I've got the newspaper. Exactly, the Baptist Church. That's a beautiful building. There it is. So that's that's the Halstead Bridge. It's really weird to take a look at those photos of the Red Mill without the, without the trees in the background. Jeez. That couldn't have been a pleasant place to be right there. Looks very swampy. There's your, uh, there's your bridge accident. No, Nora's, I guess Nora's out. I, uh, I have a question about the train station. So um, does anyone remember when it was a train station or what it was like after they closed it? I don't know, but you know, um, Joan Fairchild sat down with us and was talking about the train station uh, she remembers it. She remembers working and having the trains come in from um, from New York, especially with those with the actors that were going to be playing at the uh, what's it called music hall. Sorry, <coughs> and staying at the Clinton House. So she might she's one that has that information. Well, I'm just glad that uh, Fox Lumber saved that building. I mean, it can never be safe. We can go back to being a train station, but at least the building's there. There you go. I love and I love how everyone dressed up to come into town. Oh. In there. Hello everyone again. Um so uh I mean any any other fun stories? I think we need to do this again and we need to invite some more people. There was a bunch of people that um, wrote on the Facebook page growing up in Clinton. We should probably try and reach out to them because a lot of them had stories to share. I know there's one woman who lives over in Highbridge. Um, her granddaughter Fallon Tulo had reached out to me because her grandmother's got some really good stories. The other person is, um, Roger Playstead's wife, Maureen, uh, she grew up in town, but the Playsteads have been here forever. She actually has a local newspaper from when Lincoln was shot. Oh, wow. From, from the family. Wow. So we should probably get Maureen involved. Well, what I love to do, we, there are a lot of photos uh, uh, from the late 1880s all the way up to the... Um, the teens, 19 teens, but I gotta tell you, we are missing a ton of photos of the from the 40s through the 80s. Mm -hmm. um, there just aren't a lot, and if they are, they're mainly of like parades. You know. Um, did you did you hear that? Um, because and we've got a picture of somebody gave it to us of the houses on Center Street. So there was a period of time, and I don't know when. All the houses were painted white with green shutters. So there was someone who wanted to clean the town up and he promised to paint 
pay for the paint if everyone would paint their houses white with green shutters. So on Center Street, if you chip down on the paint, you're gonna find there's white and green paint <laughs> on all the houses on Center Street. And we found both, um, we found a picture of our house with the white and green shutters. It's a black and white, so I mean, it's, it's white, but um, you can see the dark shutters on it too. But I thought that that was really cool. And um, it, it, I think it was the 60s, so maybe they were painted, you know, in the 50s. Um, but yeah, it looked, it looked very different. And then I do have a picture of the house from where the firehouse is um, coming up New Street. And there's a kid, it's gotta be the turn of the century. There's gotta be, cause there's a kid on there and he's on a little tricycle, but it's a horse tricycle. And he's coming up New Street. It's a dirt road. There's no power lines, um, but it's a, it's a cool photo. We got it when we got the house. and. I guess it has to stay with the house whenever we leave. <laughs> <laughs> when, when was the A and P built? The exist the new A and P was built in the late seventies and opened in the early eighties, like 80, 81, I think is when it actually opened. Because I remember shopping at the A and P where Rite Aid is now in that shopping center. When did they? Who told us about the white and green? What's the white and green? The, all the houses were painted white and green. Was that Wingenroth? Uh, that was Ray Wingenroth, yes. Yeah. Do you remember Ray Wingenroth? I know the name. He was a realtor here in yeah. town. He had Ray. Two he, owned, uh, he sold his house to the Eskies on Center. Yes. 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 And he also had the house kind of and across, across the, the street. street. Yeah. 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 The, He's the one that told us about the white and green. He he sold us our house, and then we we own the house um, on Lee Street beside the bed and breakfast, the little tiny one. Mm -hmm. So apparently, because we were in that house um, in the basement, there was the railings from the front porch, and there was a truck that came down um, School Street, and the brakes failed, and so he ran into the porch. <laughs> of that house oh, wow. <laughs> so I still have I still have I even have it hanging here a piece of the railing from uh that house so I could keep that Lee Street memory <laughs> there also uh, from from my reading and my looking into things there's almost no um uh recording at all of what it was what happened when they built 78 you know what you know going right through town what there are no photos of it. There's no mm -hmm. um, archiving of um, really, I won't say chopping the town in half, but uh, chopping the town into a third. We, well, we, it, we, I was going to say, we, Mike, this is Bob. We know what happened when it was that. finished. But. Yeah. <laughs> because it, it was built, but then it wasn't connected with Pennsylvania for a while. And then when it got connected with Pennsylvania, that's when the heavy traffic really um, came to town. Well, when we, when we came out to Clinton in 69, it, 78 was already there. But then when we uh, would the only reason we're still in school. Something, <laughs> um, you had to get off 78 at Berkeley Heights, go down through the Wachung Mountains, and get yeah, on. It's an expensive thing to do. I mean, there's always a loss to that. For years, it didn't go through the Wachung Reservation. So, you know, 78 was built before we left Clinton in 78. And then it wasn't finished till shortly before we came back in 88 to connect to the East. Yes, yeah. Because we bought here in 90, yeah, 90. No? no? no that was 89, I have 93. I was corrected, 89, the other house, 93, this one. <laughs> I'm really curious what they're charging you I believe it's the country yeah, griddle that has the maps and the projections for 78. Before it was 78, it was a plan for another road, a circular bypass. Um, but Donald and his brother, who was it, what street is it? Not Water Street, the other tiny little street in town. Uh, where Donald lived, Hancock. Hancock, that road 
um, went across to the other side where the Hampton uh, Hotel is, there's actually a town of Clinton fire hydrant remaining from when the street went across there. But that was the farm that Donald and his brothers spent their lives farming, where 78 now crosses across. Well, I'm just wondering where would be a place to get any of that information? I think it might be on the walls of the country griddle. Somewhere I went had a display of different um, road proposals, different maps. Well, another idea that I'll throw out is it might be worth checking to see if Hank Bennell has got uh, memories and, and um, stories that he'd like to contribute to the town of Clinton because his family's been here for a very long time. Yeah, and they're actually trying to raise funds to reopen Bennell's Tavern. I know that um, I've had a couple of conversations with them um, and they've got some interest. It's just a matter of, you know, unfortunately the building was gutted when they had the squatters living there. So it's gonna require a lot of work. Take a lot. Yeah, and they may actually, since they've owned that since the 1700s, they may have some, um, some, you know, pictures, papers and everything else. You should probably yeah, Hank, should Hank was gonna participate in our seminar this, this past weekend. Um, yeah. I was excited because I've only ever talked to him on uh, Facebook, so. Oh, he's lovely. I ran into him in the cemetery, um, <laughs> which is an odd place, but, you know, I, I asked him, oh, you know, what are you doing here? This is my cemetery. And he said, no, you don't understand. It's my cemetery. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was really sweet. But we could reach out to him and see if he would like to add um, some pieces to this effort and, and help answer or, or contribute scans of photos in the time right. period that you're looking for, Michael. And also share some of the stories. I'm sure he's got yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. That's great. Uh, any other stories? Uh, any questions that we might be able to answer down the road? Because I'm sure people have curiosities of uh, why is something a certain way. And... Okay. Well, good. Um, uh, this is being recorded, so we're going to, um, after it goes through a, a little edit, it will, um, we'll post it up on the, uh, the Clinton webpage, and uh, we'll put it into a historic section, uh, just as kind of a living. Uh, a living history. Um, but I'm hoping this is a start. What I'd love to do, I think it's a great idea, Mayor, that uh, we um, maybe we do one that's photo oriented. People can bring some old photos, um, so we can just you know visit everything from just people's backyard parties to any parades or buildings or you know really bad outfits. I think it would be great. <laughs> great. <laughs> Well, if no one else has any questions, uh, both uh, Ross and I, as well as the mayor, would like to thank you guys for, for attending. This was fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for organizing. <laughs> this was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Take you. care, everyone. And stay safe. Yes. Yes, yes you too. Bye. Bye-bye.